shukran kabisa mpenzi mtazamaji ileo kwenye kipindi cha advanced farming kikiletwa kwako na mkulima bila jembe kwenye runinga yetu uipendayo ya HLC TV Transforming Life tunataka tuzungumzie kuhusu ufugaji wa vifaranga na biashara ya vifaranga ungana nami mkulima bila jembe hadi tamati nikikuletea mtaalamu ambaye amebobea katika nyanja hii ambaye si mwingine bali ni bwana Andrew Makatiani kutoka Lian Farm. Welcome to the show. Kindly tell us your name if uh, maybe nilikuwa nimeongea jina ambalo si lako tafadhali tuweke sawa. Naitwa bwana Makatiani na nina furaha sana kujumuika nanyi kwenye show yenu ya mkulima bila jembe. Yeah. Uh, na leo na furaha kuzungumzia juu ya ufugaji wa vifaranga ama utunzi wa vifaranga. Eh hey, labda unajua mkulima anataka kujua how can they get quality chicks sources where can be the sources of quality chicks. Uh, quality chicks unaweza pata kutoka kwa variety of places and uh, key among them are uh, they already established hatcheries within oh. the country those that uh, supply they old chicks to farmers across the country then we also have farmers who have done a good uh, developed good quality parent stock mm. within your areas of jurisdiction like in Kakamega or Mumias we have farmers who have uh, good uh, birds and uh, they are doing incubation and hatching mm. and uh, those could also be sources of uh, chicks for farmers who want to practice uh, poultry farming. There are what we call the factors to consider for you to determine if this is a quality chick, what are the factors? Uh, one thing you need to consider when you receive your chicks, you look at the eyes, you look at the, the navel of the chick and to find out if it is well covered after hatching, then you look at the eyes, are they bright? You look at the cheek, is it active? Is it running around? Those are things you look at when you're buying a cheek as a farmer. Uh, another thing is, uh, uh, this is uh, mainly from hatcheries. Those are national hatcheries eh, within the country. Because we get chicks which we do not know about the parents of. But those are the qualities you look at when you're buying chicks. Those are the factors you consider, the health of the chicks. Are they given the first vaccines? Like Marex being the first vaccine given at the hatchery. It's a very important vaccine that we need to get. But when you go now to farmers who do incubation and hatching of chicks, you consider the quality of the parent stock. You might find some parent stocks which are not very healthy or are carriers of particular diseases which you might not know. So you also look at uh, that parent stock and it allows you now to make an informed decision because uh, farmers who do hatching and incubation for their farms are not regulated, they are their own regulators. But uh, national hatcheries are regulated by various bodies within the country to ensure that they deliver quality chicks to the farmers. So those are the things you need to consider when you're buying chicks or making a choice of where to get your chicks from. Yeah. So there is uh, the issue of uh, inbreeding. Can it be also a consideration while uh, choosing the quality chicks? Yes, you have to find out. You know, there, are, there, are, there is a parent stock that has been together for a long time. The, the cocks got old and were taken off and the, the hens remained and you are raising chicks which were born from this uh, parent stock. Now they come, now the chicks with their hands together, it deteriorates the quality of the chicks you get on the farm. So those are very important questions a farmer needs to ask uh, the supplier of chicks. What is your hen? How old are your hens? Uh, uh, have they had particular diseases like salmonella? Is a, when a hen suffers salmonella, and uh, you hatch chicks from the uh, eggs of that hen, that chick is a carrier of that disease if it was not well managed. So you will find those challenges are issues which you need to really consider when you're sourcing the chicks. In breeding is a serious challenge. The chicks become weak, 
they are not uh, strong uh, uh, producers of other chicks. If you are a farmer who is buying hens and uh, cocks, and you also want to produce your own chicks in the farm, inbreeding from the source of your chicks is a point you need to consider. Yes. So, what can we do uh, as a society? You know, right now everybody is uh, looking for agribusiness aspect in farming. Yes. What can we do? in order to eliminate inbreeding so that uh, the poultry industry can grow and maybe become an enterprise that can uh, create job opportunity among the youth? Mm. Uh, what we need to do as farmers one is to be honest about the chicks we are giving to our farmers. Because if you're not honest from the onset, if you give me bad chicks, I go and raise them and I have challenges raising them then I, 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 uh, most uh, sales within the farms, you get them through connections or referrals from people who have been buying from you. So if you lied and you produced, uh, you gave out chicks that are not quality, it comes back to haunt you. Because I will, that farmer will not recommend you to another farmer and another farmer. So you keep wondering why your business, your agribusiness venture for chicks is not growing. It's because you failed the integrity test. You did not inform the farmer of what to expect when he takes your chicks. So, key aspect in agribusiness, especially in the industry of poultry, is the honesty. Have a, be a farmer who has integrity, who is honest with his clients, so that when they get a problem, they are already informed that we are expecting this challenge because these birds or these chicks have the following challenges. So we need to be open in that sector. Yeah. So maybe uh, young people are watching you. Yes. And uh, maybe they had negative attitude toward, uh, towards uh, high, uh, pulled, uh, chicks because uh, the, you may find that somebody, maybe a young person takes a loan of 10,000 to invest, to invest in chicks and then all of them uh, die because of maybe the issue of uh, the issue of uh, integrity ethics and maybe the issue of uh, inbreeding how can you motivate such like young people uh, so uh, yeah 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 so it comes that way you can get very good quality chicks, but because you are not empowered to know how to raise the chicks, you suffer losses. Or you can get very bad quality of chicks, and you also suffer losses. What we need to do as young farmers is to understand why we are making those losses. Why are our chicks dying? And from that informed position, you are able now to reinvest and move. These losses should not be the things that Zinatutua mm. Kwakazi These losses should be the stepping stones that are making us better breeders. They make us better farmers. They make us better producers within the agricultural sector. But if we go into farming with a faint heart, then we do not deliver mm. the results or we quit quickly. Develop thick skin. Mm. To manage the losses that you might be encountering. For me, I know I, I understand uh, in another way because uh, uh, brooding I, it means that uh, I, according to my understanding, is something else whereby uh, making something to maybe may, maybe getting something from another thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've, I've heard from this term brooding. What do you mean? Brooding is the process of uh, raising chicks from the day they are one day old to the time when they are able to be self-reliant, uh, where they can rely on themselves for heat, uh, temperature regulation. Now that process is what we call brooding. What? Because uh, uh, I understand the uh, other way round that uh, maybe it is uh, a way that uh, you can get a chick from an egg. That is what I understand. Getting a chick from an egg is hatching. Hatching. Okay. Yeah. But raising that 
chick from the day it comes from the egg, from the day it is hatched, to the day when it can be self-reliant yeah. without the mother being there, mm. the hen being there, mm. that is brooding. Mm. So under brooding, mm. we give optimum conditions for the raising of a chick. Optimum condition for raising of a chick. Yes. So, uh, if we talk about optimum, what do you mean? Optimum is the, the, the right condition. And the right conditions for raising a chick, number one is cleanliness. Cleanliness. Yes. Mm. Number two, joto. Joto is you in nyingi, joto jingi, au joto kidogo. Mm. It should not be cold and it should not be extremely hot. It should be optimum, about 30 degrees centigrade. So how will we be able to know when there is the uh, optimum? How can we uh, uh, gauge which, which implement uh, can a farmer use to make sure that Joto si mingi wala si kidogo? Hapa kwa fami yangu ni natumia an automated system yenye inaangalia kiwango cha Joto kwenye brooding facility. Hiyo ni an automatic electrical thermometer. Lakini kuna wale wane zatumia thermometer ya kawaida kama ile ya hospitali mm. ambaye inakuambia e, unaweza kuwa una read regularly kujua how hot or cold the brooder is mm. uh, number another way that is artificial mm. is looking at the way the chicks are mm. zimekaa namna gani hapo kwa brooder mm. are they too close to the source of heat mm. then unajua kuna baridi mm. are they so far from the close of it, the source of heat then unajua kuna joto excess mm. Are they evenly distributed in the brooder? Are they happy jumping all over? Mm. They are not stressed. Then in a manisha the kiwango cha joto pale kiko sawa. Mm. Another optimum condition for brooding is usafi wa hewa. It should be very clean. Because in the brooder, because we may enclose so that heat in a jua, in a jaribu kuwa around the, the cheeks. Uh, unapata inflow ya oxygen na outflow ya carbon dioxide na ammonia wakati vifaranga vinapungua ama when the, the dro when droppings now start releasing ammonia that air inakuwa chafu so providing an optimal condition you must have the brooder in a well aerated place mm. and then chakula kimewekwa wapi kinafaa kiwe kimewekwa mahali pasafi kabisa maji unatoa wapi maji unaweka hiyo maji wapi inamwagika ndani ya bruda ama hapana those are now conditions which now make the bruda habitable or inhabitable that improve the quality of the chick leo ni mzuri yeah, the quality the chicks the quality now is affected because wakati bruda ni chafu wanakuwa wagonjwa wanapea dawa dawa zingine zinaleta stunted growth na like kama hiyo in affect the way the chick is supposed to be kama ni safi haina bacteria infections mfaranga wana grow haraka wanaenda yes then feeding hiyo feeding itakana ipewe kwa kiwango ambayo mfaranga inahitaji kwa hiyo siku that's an optimum feeding level yani kama ni gram kumi kwa siku inapewa gram kumi kwa siku kama ni gram 20 kwa siku inapewa gram 20 kwa siku now you're feeding the chick optimally you are raising the chick optimally yeah, now those are the optimum brooding conditions. Uki fail moja, your success rate in the brooder drops. Wow, it is very, very interesting because uh, from, that is where farmers fail. Yes. But uh, we are here to learn from our mistakes. Yes. Then uh, uh, after that, uh, what next? Now, once you have ensured that the brooding conditions are optimal, asa kuna brooding processes. Brooding processes. Yes. Yeah. When you are brooding, there are certain processes which you must follow. Mm. You must ensure your brooder is disinfected. Mm. Access people who access your brooder go through the disinfection process. Mm. Uh, the feeders are supposed to be clean. The drinkers are supposed to be clean. Water must be replaced regularly. You must protect your brooder from attacks, from pests such as rats, yeah, 
snakes ndege kuingia wanakuja na other diseases which you cannot manage mm. now that ensuring that those conditions are maintained mm. that ensuring that the feeding levels are correct mm. that ensuring that water is available mm. those are the processes and they must be adhered to strictly so that you can reduce your mortality or avoid mortality completely so if you talk about mortality maybe it is a keyword to me because uh, <laughs> what do you mean about mortality mortality ni vifo vya vifaranga oh death death yeah the the, the chicks dying mm. when they die then that is uh, uh, mortality vifo yeah na hiyo losses ya yeah, uh, losses come through mortality mm. and you know when one chick dies you bought it at 100 shillings mm. it is a cost to the to the brooder yeah. it makes your chicks become expensive because you have to recover the 100 shillings you lost mm. and maybe it dies at 2 weeks you have fed it you have had a worker working on it maybe the cost is 150 mm. it has to go to be distributed to the remaining mm. so let's assume you had 50 chicks and 30 died. <laughs> yeah? Then you remain with the 20. You have to get the cost of those 30 chicks that died and trans distributed equally to the 20 chicks. So if the cost at that time when the chicks died was 150, you take uh, 150 times 30. That's around 4,500. And then you divide it equally by 20 then you lump that cost on that chick so that you remain profitable mm. yes so then uh, uh, after maybe uh, preventing the mortality feeding uh, can we encounter diseases inside the brood yes we can encounter diseases if we fail to adhere to processes mm. diseases such as uh, uh, oxidiosis, uh, diseases such as Newcastle if you did not vaccinate, mm. diseases such as Ebola if you did not vaccinate, uh, others are brooders pneumonia if you are uh, like for me I'm a continuous brooder mm. and uh, I don't uh, disinfect my brooder regularly mm. when chicks get out and I'm bringing in new ones I'm supposed to give a rest period and during that rest period, I'm supposed to have disinfected the brooder. Mm. So you find some farmers, and a little do, like broiler farmers, and little chicks leos in a grow, the kitonga for brooder, which has in a separate area, and a little zingine, evil. Asa, how wali wacha ugonjwa? How wana kuja wana pokea yu ugonjwa? Wana wacha ugonjwa ingine. So unapata bacteria, it becomes domesticated. Yani na mua kuishi kwa yu, if you do not follow brooding processes. Mm. Yes. So the issue of uh, vaccination is key. Is key. Right now we have organizations that or companies that uh, do vaccination at day one. Mm. When you receive your chicks at day one, they are vaccinated against Marex. Mm. They are vaccinated against Uboro. Mm. They are vaccinated against Newcastle mm. and infectious bronchitis. Mm. So as a farmer, you are just going to take care of these chicks up to 30 days or 35 days where you give now uh, fallpox mm. and you give uh, on the 40th day you give maybe uh, fall typhoid mm. and then after 40 days you stay for on the third month when mm. there are three months you give now um, you do deworming so, you see yeah so when you are we, we, earlier on we talked about sourcing of chicks mm. so when you source for chicks look at a supplier who is giving you chicks that are almost 90 percent done mm. where you find the vaccinations are already done the brooding is already done well then you can now your job is to raise for production mm. yes so suppose uh, maybe a farmer fails to vaccinate uh, maybe the challenges is just mortality yes uh, outcome of uh, failure to uh, vaccination failure. Yes. Then uh, uh, a farmer, if a farmer needs a vaccination program, yes. are you willing to uh, to give it? Yes, we are willing to give vaccination programs. But you see, if you bought chicks from me at day one, mm. 
what vaccination program do you need? Because my chicks are already vaccinated against everything you want on that vaccination mm. program. Mm. Except for two, fall pox and fall typhoon, mm. which you will do on the 35th and 40th day consecutively. Mm. Mm. So if, if you buy chicks from a good source, then you are covered as a farmer. Mm. You have less stress. Mm. If you buy chicks from me at one month, you have less stress. When you go to the house, you to the house. Yes. So uh, maybe there is a farmer mm. who is not your client. Yes. But you want to be, uh, maybe to know you yes. after watching your clip. Yes. Can you please kindly share? Maybe he's doing Piwa Kenyeji and he would like to follow the vaccination program. Yes. Can you please uh, maybe share the vaccination program so that uh, maybe we can save uh, somebody some? Yeah, when you uh, when you are having your Kenyeji chicks, the first vaccine you're supposed to give is Marex. 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 Marex is the first vaccine. But because you are hatching locally, the, that vaccine is beyond the reach of many farmers. Mm. So it is something that uh, you will have to gamble about. Mm. You will not be able to get it. Then after 10 or 14 days, no, on the 8th or 10th day, you give uh, Gumboro. Then on the 18th day, you will give uh, Newcastle and infectious bronchitis. Then after is it 21 or 28 days you will do a repeat of uh, Newcastle. Then uh, after about uh, uh, 30 days or 35 days you will do uh, fall pox. Then after fall pox you will do fall typhoid. Then you will repeat Newcastle and infectious bronchitis. And then finally, you will do the warming for the, for the bird. Uh, maybe I've, seen, I've visited different farms, yes. but I've found you as being unique yes. because uh, you do you do only brooding. Yes. Then you sell chicks. Why did you decide to be unique among other uh, farmers? Yeah, so that is a, a nice question and uh, it took me a lot of time to understand and develop that unique model. You see, you are a farmer and you want to do eggs. And then you also want to sell layers. Then you also want to sell cockroaches. Then you want to sell meat. You are spreading your resources 100,000 ag across four areas. 100,000 across four areas is like every area is getting 25,000. Is 25,000 sufficient to feed uh, layers? Is 25,000 sufficient to, to take care of cockerels until you are ready to put them in the market and get the right price and the right weight? Is 25,000 sufficient enough for you to run an incubator and hatch and sell chicks? So as farmers, we are supposed to to decide which is your niche area. Where do you perform best? And invest your money maximally in that area. I realized I'm good at implementing brooding processes and ensuring that our farmers get quality chicks at one month, brooded, or quality chicks at three weeks, or quality chicks at two weeks. Because I am good at that area, I'm able to dedicate my time and resources towards delivering that quality to the farmer. If you are a farmer who wants to do layers, focus, generate income and dedicate it towards layers, that dedication will ensure you receive quality eggs for your market. It will ensure that your birds are producing optimally. I like using the word optimally. <laughs> Optimally, mm. if hatching percentage is 80, mm. you are going to be doing maybe 90-95% mm. hatching because you have dedicated resources and time uh, uh, to do layers or you have dedicated resources and time to do incubation and hatching mm. and sale of the old chicks. Mm. Yeah, so that's why I decided to venture into that, that area. I also realized farmers, not many of them have the capacity 
of raising successfully the old chicks up to the time when they are ready for the table or for market. So that empathy of seeing farmers walk out of poultry farming because they bought chicks and they died also led me to venturing into Peruvian. And uh, another uniqueness of our business is we are an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, farm. As in, when Mkulima Bila Jembe Amenon Faranga Kwangu, tunampatia opportunity ya ku, ku tuna, tunamtembelea kwa farm yake, kuangalia kukuwa ke wanaendelea na majani, how to grow our services. Then, wakati kukuwa ke wanakuwa tayari, ama wanaelekea kuwa tayari, ama they are at a specific bracket, na tunaona kama, maybe, camera menu yetu leo, ako anataka vifaranga wa ama kuku wa mwezi mwili na apigia mkulima bila jembe na mweza mkulima uko na vifaranga wa mwezi mwili kuna cameraman mahali fulani anataka kuku wa mwezi mwili tunaunganisha hao na kuna wala wakulima mbao watenda paka mwisho atoe mayai na atoe awe auze kama kuku wa meza yani nyama pia tunaunganisha hao wakulima na soko za mayai na soko za nyama so tunawatafutia watu ambao watakuwaza na hiyo end to end inafanya mkulima anaweza kupata faida kwa kazi yake anafurahia kazi yake ya kuku na sisi kama watu wa brudi tunaelishwa kwamba tunabakia kwa soko we ensure that the farmer trust us because we are with you day and night ukipata challenges za diseases tunatembelea ukipata challenges za marketing tunakusaidia kuuza kitu nitakana ufanye tu na sisi ni kupiga nduru sema tu naumi hapa mm. so uh, how many youth have you mentioned uh, business uh, brooding business because i've seen you know, going far um brooding business si wengi wako na ability ya kufanya but we have met very many young Uh, mostly the age of between 30 and about 37 my age because that time wamesha amua hii ndio njia tunataka kwenda so unapata tunawasaidia ku, ku, kuelewa biashara ya kuku tunawasaidia kupata kuku wenye kufa tunawasaidia kupata soko wa kuku na tuna hiyo because of hiyo kuunganishwa wanaweza kugundua kwamba kilimo biashara ni sehemu ya ajira muhimu sana kwa wao. So far what are the, the gaps because uh, Kakamega County we consume birds from the neighboring county and the neighboring country which is Uganda. What are the gaps and what are, what are the opportunities? Uh, there are so many opportunities in this valley show. You know, you don't have to just be a farmer who keeps birds. You can participate in the poultry sector by just being a transporter of birds from one point to another. And we have opened that space to people who do border border, young people who do border border. Indirectly, they participate in that process. So, Kakamega County is almost a net importer for chicken. And uh, what we have done right now, Kama uh, uh, Farm, to me, Jaribu to revive dead poultry farms, to me tembelea hawa kulima, to me Jaribu kuelewa shida zao zilikuwa nini, and because of yu kuelewa, to kawaeleza jinsi waneza rudi kwa yu biashara na wakwa profitable, kuna wengi tunamusha Isulu, hapa Lurambi, some county tunamusha wengi sana hawa ni wanatupatia soko tumaweza kurekrut wa kulima wengine wengi sana wapia kwa biashara ya kuku wa mama ambaye wanakaa nyumbani na wao wao wanafanya kazi nje tumaweza kueleza vyama vya wa mama tumekaa nao tukawazunguzia kuhusu eh, biashara uh, young people naweza sema sio wengi sana because they are fluid bado hajaamua ni wapi anataka ku settle lakini hatujachoka kuimba injili kwamba mm. hata hapa mnaweza settle mm. na tunaweza kufanya kazi ya ukulima. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, there is a, in, a, in every enterprise there is what we call ethics and integrity. 
why should farmers come to you compared to other uh, entrepreneurs? Uh, mimi ningependa mkulima aje kwangu because nitakuwa na yeye kutoka A mpaka Z. Nitavuzia mfaranga, nitamtafutia soko. Niko tayari ku, ku, kumtembelea na kusuluhisha shida ambazo wako nazo. Niko tayari ku, kumuelimisha bila malipo kuhusu eh, jinsi ya kufanya poultry farming iwe profitable uh, profitable venture to them. Yes then uh, maybe what are the challenges because uh, it is also good for us to discuss we have talked about the uh, mazuri mazuri but uh, i know where where there is anything good we don't we cannot miss challenges so what are the challenges of our food? challenges of brooding if you do not follow brooding processes hmm? one slides slight mistake you are done i say in the african society we used to have the god of agriculture the god of rain mm. the god of uh, what food mm. the god of drought the all those things mm. i'm going to talk about the god of agriculture mm. and specifically the god of rooting or poultry farming mm. That is a very jealous God and a very rewarding God in equal measure. <laughs> if you do not give the God of brooding mm. what is due for him mm. at the right time, mm. you will surely punish him. Mm. You will lose everything. So the challenge is being honest with the God of brooding. Mm. Ensure the God of brooding anapata haki yake. Mm. Vaccinate your chicks in good time. Mm. Vaccinate your uh, nene, feed your chicks in good time. Feed mm. them quality feed. Give them clean water. Mm. Give them uh, a warm environment that they can live in mm. comfortably. Mm. Give them space. Mm. So the first challenge is adhering to the needs of the God of mm. It's very important. Mm. Another challenge is finance. You buy a hundred chicks. You have the finance, financial discipline. Then you're supposed to raise these birds for one month. But you buy feeds that can only last one week. We need to be financially disciplined when we get into this venture. Know how many bags of feed you will need for 30 days. Buy them in advance in bulk. Ukishanunua hata ukiwa huna pesa, ukuwako kuna chakula and the performance of those birds is okay. Yeah, those are the main key challenges. Yeah, brooding. Sasa zingine pia unapata challenge na soko. Kama saa hizi corona imetutandika, watu hawana pesa vizuri, yani inaitwa expendable income. Mm. Ile nyu wanaweza amua kuweka kwa kuku. Mm. Haiko enough. Mm. Sasa hiyo pia inaleta hiyo challenge. Mm. Yes. And is record keeping important? Mm. Oh. I don't know why I forgot to mention record keeping and the processes. You must keep records. Mm. How many kilos have you fed today? Mm. How many kilos will you feed tomorrow? Mm. How many? How much have you spent on vaccinations? Mm. How much have you spent on the purchase of the chicks? Mm. How many chicks have died? Mm. All those things put together culminate into doing a cost for your birds. Mm. You might find the cost is so low, and you're selling your birds so expensive, mm. you cannot compete in the market. Mm. You might find your costs are so high. And you're selling your birds so cheaply. Mm. You people will come buy your chicks, but you can not maintain the business. Mm. So that record keeping allows you, as a farmer, mm. to know the position of your business, mm. to know the challenges you are getting, to know farangawangu na kufuwe why, to know chakula tunenda na kasa na kwanini. If you don't have record, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, those challenges. Those are some of the things you need to. Maybe we would also like to know how did you started? Where did you started from? Where are you now? Ah, mimi I started by accident. I got my sister-in-law who was staying in a rental unit and wanted to keep chicken. But the landlord 
did not allow her to mm. give the chicken. Mm. And uh, so she asked my wife if she could bring her chicken here so that we raise them for her and when they are ready she will take them from us. Mm. When she brought them here, those chicks died. Mm. It's only one cock that survived and the hen. Wow. So I kept asking my wife, when are we, how are we going to explain this scenario mm. to your sister? Mm. So it forced me to start buying kenyeji kukus. When I go out and I find a kenyeji bird somewhere, mm. I buy that kuku mm. and, uh, and uh, bring it to the farm. Mm. So during that time, these kukus became many and they lay so many eggs mm. and hatch mm. kenyeji chicks. Mm. So during my travels in town, I had somebody, I overheard somebody looking for Kenyaji chicks. Mm. And I said I have them. Mm. And I quoted a price. Mm. I didn't know even how much I should sell, it, but I sold them at 250. Mm. And I sold 30 or 25 chicks. I can't remember the exact number, but I think that is. Mm. Between 25 and 30 chicks. Mm. So which year was that? Uh, that was about like four years ago. Four years ago, and that was the spark that put me into poultry farming. That's when I realized I can sell chicks and make money. Mm. And I decided to make it to my green collar job. Mm. Now that is my job. It pays me, it educates my children, it pays my bills, it pays workers, it employs people, in directly or indirectly. Mm. Yes. So where where can you put yourself as much as you started accidentally mm. now? Uh, the journey of four years. You started with how many birds? Uh, right now, how many birds do you have? Right now, you have visited my brother. We have about 1,500 chicks, mm. which we anticipate to sell by the end of 30 days. Mm. Then, uh, this number keeps oscillating. Mm. We handle about 4,000 chicks every month, mm. but they don't stay in our facilities. Because in a year, it can be really much more much more. We can manage much more. So, we can get a little bit of badisha. Your turnover is different. We are doing actually during this period of time, the corona period of time, every month at least four thousand. Uh, and these customers also come back. They refer others. So that means that uh, our chicks are good and they are quite uh, quite uh, healthy and of good quality. And then uh, comparing myself then and now, I can say that farm yetu imekuwa kiko. Sio ile tulianza nayo. But it has taken a lot of training, a lot of patience, a lot of learning, failing and starting again. Kuna wakati hata tungo tunaweza kukula. Nandikuwa na familia kubwa, kualisha ilikuwa ngumu. But when I kept going in this journey, that was now the transformation that made me a better person. We have a very funny question to ask, yes. but uh, allow me to ask. Yes. Uh, so after school, uh, have you ever been employed anywhere? No, I've not been employed anywhere. All I've done was just training of schools to do with the drama, and whatever now, come the mrefu sana nikawa ni mepotle kwa ulimwengo usani ku andika michezi ya kivisa na kuyapelewa kwa competitions na hiyo pesa ikitoko kwa ndiyo natumia kujisha familia yangu kwa peleka shule, kupanya mwika maigwe lakini nifika maali, familia imekua kubwa mapato ni madogo, leo una kazi, kesho ndiyo nikapata sasa msukumo wa pigia kwa ukulima yes, sasa kuingia kwa ofisi hivyo minta kambia siku na ningependa kuambia vijana wengine hata wasifikiria ofisi wajaribu kuja identify na sehemu ya ukulima mm. sababu faida ya ukulima ni nzuri sana mm. bora uweke manani utilie manani mm. ukulima focus mm. the yes. so you are just a director on your own in yes. your farm yes and uh, i wake up leave my house i go to my brother mm. umeona ofisi yangu iko pale ndogo mm. tunakaa pale tunaangalia kuku mm. tunaajiri watu wanatufanyia kazi mm. boda boda wanatubebea chakula ya kuku and that has been able to take care of my family. I have, I have five kids, and the eldest is in Form One. It pays school fees. The others are in primary school. It pays. It feeds them. 
it gives them a decent life mm. so i would urge many young people to stop thinking about them and their office. Mm. they have to shift completely and it doesn't matter how small you start mm. answer jinsi ulivyo mm. weka akiba keep hitting that door kuna siku hiyo plango ya so uh, do you have any role model in your life yeah my father is my greatest role model uh, he has been in agriculture for many years uh, he was a dairy farmer and uh, he has never given up he worked so hard to ensure that uh, kakamega dairy cooperative was back to its feet and functional right now many farmers are benefiting from kakamega dairy cooperative society so for me he has been a role model and i also hope to impact my, to have uh, a good social impact mm. i want to have many women doing poultry farm many young people going into poultry farm so that we can also stop importing chicken in our county and be exporters of the same mm. or if we import mm. when they buy what comes from our county it's the best it's the quality it's the most tasty but yes then i have mentors mentors who have not really been farmers but uh, those mentors have met me uh, when i say i'm going to do a those mentors will always remind me have you done a mm. we want you to do a you promised us you are doing a mm. why haven't you done a mm. those people have been like a wall that uh, that uh, does not allow me to fall back mm. yeah they always ensure i fulfill my promise yeah. so as young people we need to get role models your father could be a role model what he is doing could be one of the things you want to do then get mentors let those people who whom you can be accounted accountable to they will tell you why are you doing this and you will listen and reflect and those are the people now who will now transform you from what you are now to a better person in the future so how many guys do you have so far? currently my company employs seven me my wife mm. you're the director yes and uh, you earn i earn a salary from it yeah. and then we have a livestock production officer who ensures that we uh, you know my wife and i do not have backgrounds in agriculture mm. so he ensures that we are within the standards mm. of a livestock production mm. yes then we have consultant pet mm. uh, our consultant pet actually was elected recently to be the chair of the veterinary association of kenya and we feel as a company we are very proud of him mm. then uh, we also have three workers who now help us run the cooling facility. We call them Buddha assistants. These Buddha assistants are three. Mm. One takes care during the day, mm. another one takes care in the night, mm. and this other one is a tiebreaker. Mm. When huyo usiko mwanza shift yake, akienda kumzika huyo anapigia. Thank you for your time. And maybe when somebody want to reach you, maybe what can how can they reach to you i can be reached through my facebook where you can look for andrew uh, andrea makatiani or you can get me on uh, website uh, is uh, leanfamafrica.co.ke ama unaweza kunipigia simu kwa 0727259 na tutaweza kujumuika kwenye simu tuzungumze na tu, hata kututembelea kwenye shamba letu hapa kakamega thank you for watching us and may god bless you abundant amen